The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Hello and welcome to my brother, my brother, me, an advice show for the modern era. Batting down the hatches, it's Great Iron Day, and I'm Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy, your Miller's brother. I'm your baby brother, Griffin McElroy. Get your belt, attach your belt to you and Helen Hunt, and then wrap it around that pipe, and you're not going anywhere when the football NATO comes. A football storms are coming. Of lots of touch, uh, a hailstorm touchdowns. The hailstones the size of footballs. My knee's been aching all day. You know what that, that means? That usually means it's going to be just a touchdown NATO. Oh shit, Peyton coming. Oh, Peyton come. here come Peyton. Guys, are you fucking ready? Are you fucking ready? Have you prepared yourself? Have you made yourself ready? You and your home and your family. Are you armed? Well, better question have you prepared your soul? For the football what, resurrection. Yeah, what's going to happen to you after the football comes? I've got some literature here I'd really like you guys to read. <laughs> um, have you prepared your soul for when Peyton Manning comes for you? He could come at as any he, time. As he does for all of us. That's what's so scary. I can't go in Papa John's anymore because Peyton Manning is in all Papa John's simultaneously. I don't know if you guys know this, but Papa John created a demonic portal that Next. he ensnared Peyton Manning in. He lets him out every football game day. Uh, otherwise, he is simultaneously in every Papa John's at once. Have you ever seen Multiplicity? It's like that. It's a lot Next, like that. Next time you're in Papa John's, do me a favor, look in a mirror. Think about Gatorade. Mm-hmm. Oops, who's there? Peyton Manning's behind you. Um, I think that the end will basically be Peyton Manning... Uh, gathering up all the world's bad people in Las Vegas, uh-huh. and Eli Manning, mm. uh, the, the gathering all the good people. Now who? Now who's he? Sorry, Eli. Yeah, he he's his brother. Is he's he the malformed he's... clone of Peyton Manning. Right. Oh, I see. So to continue the multiplicity riff, it would be like if Michael Keaton, if if one of his clones was just like a torso without a head. When, <laughs> when yeah, Peyton that's... Manning was born. William Refrigerator Perry took one of his ribs, and from that rib, he formed he Eli. Put a, so, he put a salty rub on it. He marinated yeah. it in some sauce, <laughs> and then he was ready for the big game. He was. He needed a few dips, and he was ready. Uh, football is coming, and I don't think you can ever be too ready for, for football. Um, this may be our last transmission. Uh, we may get swept away by gridiron fever tonight, which is a literal disease. Yeah. That uh, let me actually it strikes it strikes country. the young, the elderly, um, the middle aged people who are in like their twenties, thirties, forties, fifties. See, just everybody, Cheech. everybody, all of it, all the decades. Cheese right? heads, yeah. it gets cheese heads real hard. Um, it gets parrot heads. Parrot heads. <laughs> you guys got a favorite? Who you who you pulling for? Uh, I'm rooting for Nate Irving. Oh, me so. too. I was going to say the exact same thing. So, Nate, Nate Irving, uh, this is my favorite, qu- <laughs> my, in my favorite quote of the week, Nate Irving was asked how he was going to unwind before the big game, and he said, uh, I'm going to sit up in my hotel room and play my Pokemon game. <laughs> I love you, Nate Irving. You're the best football player. According to the Wall Street Journal, he promises he won't spend all his time playing Pokemon. He might occasionally mix things up by watching HGTV. Did you guys know that I'm a professional fucking football player and my name is Nate Irving? Did you guys know that about me? I'm basically the best football player. I'm super good. I set like a career record with like 41 tackles this season. I'm like super, super good. And I didn't know it. Yeah, that's all you need. We are on a boat. And our destination is Self Discovery Island. Well, can you imagine, like, Nate Irving, you know, the Broncos win the Super Bowl, and it's like, Nate Irving, are you excited? He's like, I am excited. I won the Super Bowl, and I also beat the trainer I've been trying to beat for, like, the last two weeks. 
It was uh, awesome. I don't think he has any trouble beating any kind of trainers. I'm just saying I think he's probably pretty fun. Oh, wait. So you just assume because he's an excellent footballman that he's also really good at the Pokemon. Oh, he's like, what, he's terrible at Pokemon. And it's just he, <laughs> football is not a challenge for him anymore. He just can't wrap his mind around, like, the different typesets, the different elemental uh, I can't remember what psychic is strong against. Oh, what shit. is psychic what beats, strong what against? What beats bugs? Ah, damn it. My girlfriend spends the night at my place more often than not. And while I tolerate her hair dryer, hair straightener, and assorted other energy guzzling beauty accoutrement, I can't stand when she makes changes to the thermostat in the morning after I've left and heats the condo up to tropical temperatures while nobody is home to enjoy it. I've tried asking politely, but my electric bill has gone up more than 300% from December to January. What? is a conservation-minded boyfriend to do, and that's from Chile in Chicago. You could do what my landlord does and put a lockbox around the thermostat. That should be good for the relationship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, honey, you can't be trusted. Bye, I'll Bye. see you at work. I put Love all, you. Also, I put all your hair dryers and stuff in a separate lockbox, and I only I know the password. <laughs> I'm going to dip back into the uh, Bim Bam Classics folder and dig out this one because I think it's pr- appropriate. Uh, go to the thermostat and just put a little jelly on it. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. I went to change the thermostat and my hand got all this jelly everywhere. I hate this. Right, but... Maybe Ugh. the problem is you... What kind of jelly? Oh, right, and this person... Is, move on. This person is leading a conservation-based lifestyle. And I that's admirable. You know, that you can have the patience and the willingness to sacrifice all of the good things in the world to live like that. Like, good, good kudos. Um, this person does not want to waste jelly like that. That is jelly that could be eaten by a person who needs some, like, really needs some jelly to eat. And you are using, you're wasting it. You're you're using it as a punitive measure. And that does not seem like something a, a conservationist would be into. Let me throw this out. Maybe the problem is you can't take something away without presenting another option. So if you say you can't raise the thermostat, maybe you also give her, like, a barrel that she can burn some newspaper and, like, scrap wood in. Oh, so, like, a one-in, one-out, fuck-the-earth sort of policy. Yeah. Okay. A yeah. literal scorched-earth policy, because if you do that too much, like, this rock will be uninhabitable. Yes. But, I mean, it's inside. It's not like it's going to pollute the outside. It's inside his apartment. As long as he never opens a door or window and releases the I, toxic fumes he's built up in there. Yes. How yes. do you get anybody to do anything? Guilt. Buy a animal that's susceptible to heat. And let it die? And let it die. Build a snowman once. in your living room. What? Put a snowman in your living room and make her love it. <laughs> yeah, put a snowman in the living room and tell her that via a magical instrument, it has become possessed with the spirit of your dead relative. And then when she turns the thermostat up and melts, just starts screaming. No, she won't, no. She won't care about that. Just make it oh. look like Benedict Cumberbatch. She'll is that crazy what hold it. the fucking phone? Is that what like is that what ladies are into That's right what now? Ladies are into right now. That's I, I don't know. That's what they're into. His I mean, I get like he's a tremendous actor, and of course, like I, who doesn't love Benedict Cumberbatch, but I never thought about him on like an erotic level. He's got so many ridges. He's got a lot when of ridges on that out, dome. I think right now, if ladies could just watch Benedict Cumberbatch and Tom Hiddleston just like rub their faces together. That's all they want. Oh, they God. just want that. He has a lot of ridges I mean, too. That's a lot. It's like two like ski slalom courses, just like rubbing, rubbing, yep. making friction. And that's or, and that's the new thing. Ridges. Ski slaloms. I got to get some fucking dome ridges. But apparently, <laughs> dome ridges are where it's at. I'm as surprised as anybody, honestly. Um. So I guess those are some pretty good suggestions. Can't wait. Can you ask her to pay for the extra 200%? Oh, my God. Split the utility bill with her. Yeah. Or. Then she can do what she wants. Just ask her to be more fucking considerate. Please. Just be considerate of my feelings. Buy her a giant sweatshirt that she can wrap herself Hold on. Wait a minute. Are you dating a salamander? (laughs) Because if you're dating a salamander, then you need to be conscious of her lifestyle needs. And Mm -hmm. maybe you eat the extra... I mean, guys, I lived in Chicago. Energy ain't cheap. Um, right. Energy and it gets cold up there. It gets cold Ugh. up there, and there's only so much gas. And if 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 energy raiders come by your street, you have to fight them off. Uh, mm-hmm. But if this if this woman needs heat, or else her salamander skin will turn to dust and she dies. Which is how salamanders work. Here's a Yahoo. Uh, I'm just going to stop asking if you guys want it, because the answer is never no. 
That's true. Uh, this one was sent in by Carolyn Flynn, or Caroline Flynn. Thank you, Caroline, or Carolyn. It's by Yahoo Answers user Megan, who asks, what should I wear to a club? Hey. Hmm. Hey. Hey. Uh, I'm 19, and I'm going to a club that's for 16 to 20-year-olds, kind of a crazy mm-hmm. club, uh, and I'm not sure what to wear. I don't want to look like a slut, but I want to look a little sexy. There's a couple things mm-hmm. I will not wear. I absolutely despise skinny jeans, so I refuse to wear those. And as far as shoes, okay. I don't want to wear heels because they hurt my knees. And I can't wear flats because I have to find ones that fit. Other than those few things, I'm pretty much open to anything. I'm 5'5", 115 pounds, so I'm pretty skinny. I have a butt and boobs, but neither are huge. Did Thank you God. need to point out that you have a butt and boobs? <laughs> I have a butt. My legs do not just connect to my waist. I'm an amorphous blob who poops through her belly button. Uh <laughs> Uh, so That's my life. So there's That's why I hate skinny jeans so much. I don't have legs. I hate legs. skinny jeans. Oh, and one more thing. I'm a, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm a living blob. Uh, so there's not really anything I can't wear. You're getting pretty full of yourself. Uh, if you guys think, uh, if you guys could maybe put links in with your answers so I can get a better idea of what you're thinking, that would be great. Thanks. A teen club? I guess. Those I mean, exist, I, dude. I guess Huntington had, we had the gym factory, which was a trampoline uh, uh, Emporium, but in the back room by was, day, trampoline Emporium by day, by teen night, hot spot, by a night. teen hotspot, which is where like fucking eighth graders learn to bump and grind. Which how Here do you? In how do you, we have a place called Blast? Oh no! And it's, it's a teen club. It's the same same principle. Yeah, it's, except it's like a full on. It's a full on like nightclub in Newport on the Levee, and I. think think it's open like Fridays and Saturdays uh, and then they card people to get in and like then they serve Red Bull and Gatorade and it's the, just it, a when they wave. I, when they ID them if they're older than like 20 do they they don't, they don't let them in don't let them in but when you look at the place what's crazy if I may for a moment what's crazy about it is it looks like someone said hey parents don't worry it's gonna be totally safe we're gonna keep an eye on it Kids, don't worry. We've really set this up so you guys can like fucking do. No, I remember stuff. like our teen club, the gym factory was the fucking grossest like place yeah. I've ever been. Like I- I'm I'm 26 now. I have not been to a place that allowed drinking that was like 10 percent as gross as the gym factory was because it was just like just like a bunch of eighth year olds, eighth year olds, just a bunch of eighth mm-hmm. graders, just fucking gyrating and just like pupating and emerging from their sexual chrysalis. To become like a bunch of fuck moths, <laughs> attracted to some genital flames. Are you talking about the same gym factory where there's like rope swings? Where I had my fucking s- no kidding. I had I think I had like my fifth grade birthday party there. Three years later, I was like fucking jizzing inside my jinko jeans. <laughs> like that place was. I'm thinking about it now. That place is crazy. <laughs> That's crazy that that, I guess the fact that teen clubs exist is crazy enough, but like, also there's like a, the world's biggest jungle gym and around the corner is like a, a fucking- <laughs> Dry humping. Is dry humping the teen red light district. <laughs> anyway, what's this, what's this, what's this young woman going to wear? A chastity belt. I, I would yeah. wear a, a from extremerestraints.com. I would wear a chain that you can attach to your leg that keeps you from going to this place. Yeah, it's treacherous. How about just some kind of like harness so that if you get in too deep, you can tug the rope and your parents can pull you out so that you don't get trapped there. You want your parents watching you. You want your parents to be your spotters in this adventure. They're, yeah, they're at a safe distance. I want it tied to the back of the caravan. So you tug the rope, and they just floor it. Um, and you go flying out the front door. <laughs> oh, shit's going down. Get me out of here, moms. Hey, do you want to ride on yourself? Play glass window. You want to ride on yourself with this neon highlighter? It's just stuff to do because we can't drink. Uh, yeah, hold on. Let me just pull on this rope three times. And bye. Bye. <laughs> Maybe a... Uh, how about a nice blouse? A taste. Maybe a pantsuit. Pantsuit. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. The kids, you know what the kids like nowadays? They like writing on themselves just because they can't drink and they just need something to do. Uh, and they're really into Margaret Thatcher. Just like her You know what I want to come back? Shoulder pads. Oh, yeah. God. Man, it, if I can't believe as ironic as everyone and everything is all the time forever now, 
that those haven't really reared their their ugly flat heads. That's got to be hard for like their creator, Paul Shoulder, shoulder Pads. Pad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> the way look at these. Come on, oh, man, these are bald. Hey guys, look at me. And then like a guy that's like wearing a suit that he bought from the set of Hanging with Mr. Cooper is like, dude, I don't know. That is a little too much for me. Shoulder pads? A little much. I don't know. Let me clean off the fake lenses in my glasses. Let me clean Uh. those out real quick. Sorry. I want to look like David Byrne, but you look a little too much like David Byrne. Does that make sense? Yeah. I want like 75% burn. If you go too much over that, then you just look silly. You know, I'm going to go on a limb and I'm going to say the next big thing is blazers that are nautical themed with shoulder pads. So, like, the buttons have the anchors on them. Yeah, sure. Maybe there's, like, a blue and white stripe thing going on. But it definitely has a nautical flair and shoulder pads. Maybe oh, you my get, God. I'd give up everything to follow that style. Maybe you got some sardines. <laughs> some sardines in the pocket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sailors. Oh, yeah, it's a full sensory experience. Sight, smell, sound. That you is, know, you if, open up the coat, and the speakers play the sound of the ocean. It's so important. If you're going to a teen club, you have to put together a full sensory experience. <laughs> you know why? It's A, it's because it says something about you. I'm into boats. Hey, what's up? I'm a child of the ocean. That's sort of my style. But more importantly than that, you want to be able to transport yourself to anywhere but the place you are, which is a teen club. <laughs> Explain. Much, can you guys explain the science to me? Is it just, is it, it doesn't make any sense to me that a club where you can drink and get fucked up and like hang out with adults, all of whom are of consenting ages, is less gross than a place where you <laughs> cannot drink and everyone's in high school. Because well, the, the one thing the teen club lacks is excuses. You, everything True. that's happening there is completely generated by hormones. It's and, Sodom and Gomorrah is what it is. I, right, exactly. It's just a pavilion of carnality, don't look back. and you can't don't, blame any of it on alcohol. Don't look back at the gym factory. Just go. Just go. Oh, you're salt. Now you're pillow salt. You fucked up. <laughs> he, well, here's the problem, Griffin. At, at an adult club with adult people, they also have adult reasoning and stuff like, I just can't go up and grind on I this think, person. I work with them. No, I think you're right about the hormones. I think that's it. That is a fucking cocktail, man. We know, yeah. Ugh. Eighth grade, fucking forget about it. I was, I'm usually, I guess, like 98% water and 2% meat. And then back there, I was just like, just like from the waist 100% down. 100% bone. Just like bone zone all the way. When I, when I was in eighth grade, I was uh, in a computer class. And our teacher was, uh, uh, he was an overweight man, angry at the world. Seem to hate pretty much everything. Now hold on, this was a computer class teacher. Now wait, hold that on. doesn't sound right. No. He <laughs> seemed to hate everything, every single thing about his life. Seemed to make him miserable. And the very first thing he said to us on the first day of this eighth grade computer class was, "I wouldn't trade places with any of you for <laughs> love or money." <laughs> That's how this guy's game was so whack in his entire life. His entire life circle was off kilter, and yet he would not trade places Ugh. with a young, vibrant eighth grader. Vibrant, for- my balls. That is, I wasn't, nobody's vibrant when they're in eighth grade. They're just like exuding weird, like chemicals and shit. They're just like, they have a sheen of slime. They're just a bunch of like jizz slugs. I fucking, oh. <laughs> they have a slime of sheen, actually, too. Ugh. Back when. Man, we went through some shit, and we came out on the other side so much stronger. I recently got out of a four-year relationship. By both of our accounts, we were very happy together. But my ex was never ready to commit to marriage, and I got tired of waiting. I'm 33, and he's 38, BT-dubs. And this is L.A., if that makes a difference, and of course We love it. I've started seeing other people. My question is this. How can I avoid getting involved with another commitment phobe? I'm definitely not desperate to get married, but I am ready to find a life partner. At what point in a new relationship should I bring this up? After a few dates, a few weeks, months? I basically want to say I only date guys who are interested in marriage. Don't do that. I don't want to come across as crazy, pathetic, or desperate. What's your advice? Thanks, Laura. All right. Don't, like, the, the labels of crazy, pathetic, or desperate have nothing to do with it. It's just, like, it's almost like 
rude in a way. It's just like a weird thing to float by well, somebody. Put it put it on a completely di- like put it in a different framework and say it's like walking to a job interview and say, "Hi, I'm such and such. Um, I'm here to interview, and I want you to know I'll only take this job if eventually I get to be CEO." I've got my eye on a management position. Yeah. And I won't accept the job if you can't guarantee that that's going to happen. It's like, oh, we just met. Like, I I don't know. I think by its very nature, commitment in the context of a relationship, like, has to be 100% holistic. It cannot be forced or artificial in any way because like this this person that you you dated and you guys had a, a a good relationship and you were very happy together but like if you guys were that happy and you spent that much time together and he still didn't want to commit like that has always to me seemed like evidence of other shit going on yeah i what i've found is that if people aren't ready like if people are afraid of commitment uh, even if they have rules for themselves i'm not looking for something serious i'm not looking for a lifelong thing if it's right and it's the right relationship it's the right pairing then that then that kind of commitment even if it's not you know marriage will follow i mean that that you will want to just because you'll be into something so great that you don't want to get out of it maybe that's an overly romantic way of looking at things but that's uh seemed to be my experience no i agree and i think the problem is is that asking early on like Hey, I just want to know that you're the type of person that was. I feel like it's cheating because I feel like it's like you got to get to know, and that's why starting a new relationship is always scary because there are so many unanswered questions that you learn over time, and wanting to get all those questions out of the way early so you don't have to worry about it. I think it takes a lot away from the discovery and the newness of it all, yeah. and you know, it, getting to know the person. So I. I my honest answer is I don't think you can. I think you just have to get to know them and come to that conversation naturally because I think if you try to force it and it sounds like you're eager to have that conversation, so chances are it's not going to come about you know, naturally of its own accord, and so it will probably not be at the right time. And, Laura, you may find that you, if you force that question too early, you may find yourself in a relationship that you don't want to commit to but are enjoying and the other person's ready to like bat down the hatches and which is and get hit. which is so much shittier than the alternative it's way worse it's a lot it's a lot worse i i to your credit it, I, like I, it's really really good that you look back on that older the the last relationship that you were in um and you, you you're still happy about it because you recognize that you like had a good time and you you grew from it even though it didn't result in like a lifelong thing because if you don't look at your stuff like that that will drive you crazy like oh four years just gone yeah and you don't want to you don't want to um don't be in a relationship for four years again like that if somebody doesn't want to commit to you laura you're the best if they're not going to commit to you then then and and you know you've had plenty of time for the relationship to evolve to a point where that would make sense Mm -hmm. you need to cut cut your ties cut your losses you're you're a Uh, great great lady and Especially you if someone. you find that out early on, if you're like, hey, I'm the type of person that wants to get married, and they're like, oh, I'm, I'm not. Cool. Like, that idea of, like, I'm going to change them, or I'm going to be the one, it's going to be different with me. It's like, well, if there was a possibility of that, they wouldn't have said anything. You know what I mean? It's it's such a, it's such a cutoff to be like, oh, yeah, I'm not interested in getting married. Like, okay, that's not going to change with that person in this relationship. Because the I best you can hope for is you wear them down, and four years later, they're like, okay, I guess so. I also that's think that you are going to, by by setting up a question of marriage too early, I think you can um, put it into a weird light, right? Where they start weighing the pros and cons of you as, like, a holistic person rather than just someone they see movies and eat dinner with mm. sometimes, right? I mean, if you're if you're if the marriage question is on the table at the very beginning, then you lose a lot of the the uh, easier stuff to sort of right to deal with. Dates, you're, you're, dates should be you're raising the stakes very high. They should be so fun in the beginning. They should just be like, I'm gonna hang out with this cool person that I like and I'm attracted to, and it doesn't have to be anything more than that. And then when it is something more than that, it's so exciting and so great. Especially when it's mutual and it evolves from there. If you introduce this question, you lose out on that, like, 
I don't, that almost Shark Tank-esque, I could walk, whatever. You know what I mean? That's, that is the, that's the true joy. I forget, yeah, I do forget what dating is like, though. We sh- uh, and no. I would wager that my two brothers are also in the same camp. I don't remember. No, I'm still dating a woman, and her name is my wife. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. And it sucks. Ever- I can't remember her real name. I think it's my wife. I'm not certain. <laughs> hey, guys, know, hey, guys, hey, guys, hey, guys, hey, guys, hey, guys, hey, guys, hey, guys. My wife. <laughs> you guys remember Borat? No, that, that was guy, that was Austin he Powers. Is a character. I'm sorry. One more time. Let me hear it again. My life. <laughs> is Austin Powers melting? My life. I... <laughs> Wizard sleeves. It's getting sucked into a black hole. Come back, Austin. Come back to us. You guys, it's funny. The longer we do this show, I feel like we don't. I I don't get better at giving advice, but I get better at knowing. When people are going to tell us we gave bad advice, mm-hmm. I don't think that was bad advice. Like, <laughs> I don't know. That, it just seems like people are going to disagree with us. These things are so complicated. I don't. No, I, I don't, know, but it just seems like uh, objectively, like I see, like when I'm at the H E B buying some chips and guac, which I do daily because I have to eat an entire tub of guacamole every day to stay alive. <laughs> um, I see a Cosmo at the fucking register that's like, how to how to get your man to commit, and it's like if you have to fucking like. If you have yeah. to, like, trap somebody or trick somebody, it just doesn't seem as good as, like, just finding the right person. And then both of you just very naturally slide into this state, like, oh, shit, it's you. Like, hey, it's you. You're the one. Yeah. That's awesome. I don't know. Maybe I, I'm, right, I'm not saying why. it doesn't happen the other way, because I'm sure it does. Like, I'm sure it happens all the goddamn time. I'm just saying, like, it, it, it doesn't seem like that should be the default thing that you aim for. You know what I mean? Yeah, that I mean. It's kind of putting the cart before the horse, yeah. I think, a little bit. Um, how uh, about a Yahoo? Yeah, please. Uh, this Yahoo, uh, as soon as my mouse starts working, this Yahoo was sent in by Ron Conley. Thanks, Ron. It's by Yahoo Answers user. It's a strong name, huh? Can we Ron- just call him Ronley? Uh, Ronley, thank you for sending this in. It's by Yahoo Answers user. Ah, fuck. 2.718 It's a bunch of numbers. I think it's pi. That's pie, right? No. Uh, nope. Thank you, Ron, for sending this in, and thank you, 2.7 whatever, for asking it. He asks, God gave Adam nipples, intending him to be the female, then changed his mind, but left the nipples on? I don't understand the question. God gave Adam nipples, intending him to be the female, then changed his mind, but left the nipples on? Many atheists no, used to have... just repeating it doesn't help. Uh, many atheists used to have fun asking why God gave Adam nipples... So he can help with breastfeeding? I believe I have finally thought of the answer. God originally <laughs> intended Adam to be the female, then quickly changed his mind, making Eve the female, but God decided to leave the nipples on Adam, especially since Adam had already named them. Does this sound about right? <laughs> this one's Steve and this one's Jerry. Uh, replies from religion scholars and others appreciated. I can't, okay. So in this okay. person's mind, base. God made Adam, said, that's a lady, and then he said, uh, I feel like the breasts <laughs> should, like, do more. <laughs> so in fa- God may be infallible, but everybody gets one. Yeah. Uh, gets and one his voter. was just right at the very beginning. Right at the top. Well, I mean, he made the sun. It's not like he made the sun. He was like, Mm, maybe <laughs> he put nipples on that too. <laughs> God, he put nipples and said, "This is a female." No, this is a son. How no, okay, crazy! Son. This, is okay. A, okay. this is a female. Now remember, no, that's the light and the dead. Remember, children, don't look directly at the sun because you'll see its nipples, and that's just sort of rude. Don't stare at that. It's not its fault. I prefer to think of it that God, like, was making Adam, was making a woman, and at the last second went, "No way to dude." <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, shit. just <laughs> hold up. I can't. Okay, I. Okay, so God can make people, but He can't banish nipples off of them. <laughs> God, it, can God create a nipple so big even He can't erase it? <laughs> Are you saying that Adam had like one huge nipple? He had to drag it. <laughs> Why did you do this to me, God? He had to drag Why you it behind me him? So, like a wedding dress, like trail or something. I, first off, I, we could just go point by point on this question. First off, how bored are these atheists? This is what they're doing for fun? No, I mean, fun? That's, a, that's a thing, right? Like, if God exists, why do dudes have nipples? If God exists, why do dudes have nipples? I mean, it, we're all stymied by that question, aren't we? I mean, but... Because um, God's a dirty bird. 
I mean, they're cool. You know why I think you made them? Are you ready for this? I'll, I'll crack this shit wide open. National Treasure. Jesus edition. Um, it's because our chest would look super crazy if we didn't have them on there. Think about that. Yeah. Think about yeah, aesthetically. It's like if you if if dudes, it was just like st- top to bottom. All right. Hair. Cool. Eyes. They can be different colors. Sometimes they're really pretty. Uh, a nose. Yeah. You need that for smelling. Uh, mouth. Sure. You need somewhere for the sounds to come out. And then like. Nothing, 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 dick. <laughs> right? Like, if we're looking at the center pillar, if we're looking at the chakras, hair, eyes, nose, mouth, yup, check, love all those. Lots of variation, lots of differences. And then nothing. <laughs> it is, a, that's a, a great point. Fucking if 20 God... miles of flesh, and then stuff starts happening again. If God build us... It's like the movie AI. It's like a really strong beginning. And the ending yeah. is super exciting. And then, like, what happened in the middle? Like, Jude Law took him to a fucking robot circus, and he got lost and uh, destroyed New York. Like, who gives a fuck? I, if God did build us top to bottom, he did get, like... I think he got burn out yeah like oh man that well, i have to imagine he I did it putting that much detail into things right I, he I did it like the old fly. mego toys you know old toys where he said like okay we've got a stock body mm-hmm. and then we can just put different heads on it and different outfits and that will be the true. different people that's a good point travis like we he he just had one idea for bodies and he's like i don't know maybe I just reuse that just keep using yeah. it over, well, and yeah, over again because yeah guys yeah the two of you because every dude's body looks exactly the same that's why when you see like me and channing tatum if we're wearing full head masks you're like mm, god uh that one's griffin oh no that one's channing fuck mm. no but i mean it's not you c- okay fair but if i were to cut off channing tatum's head I'd go to jail. But if I did <laughs> cut off Channing Tatum's head and I showed you Channing Tatum's bottom, you wouldn't be able to tell if that was Channing Tatum or Kevin Sorbo. I or actually other... carved those. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Those are your two go to attractive, in shape dudes Channing Tatum and Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> Kevin Sorbo is Hercules, okay? But that he was Hercules. Like, I can't tell the difference between them physically. Also, he was Hercules in 1981. <laughs> <laughs> he's not Hercules I mean, forever because he's not actually Hercules. I mean, is that Kevin Sorbo or is that Shining Tatum? I don't know. I'll have to wait till they turn around. I cannot see their face. I actually, I, I carved sorry. I carved my initials into Channing Tatum's ass so I could tell them apart. It's the only way. <laughs> I I clearly meant Kevin Sorbo classic. Oh, I okay. I wasn't implying. Was not like, new Sorbo. Not new Sorbo. Not Crystal Sorbo. <laughs> Crystal Sorbo, classic Kevin Sorbo. The original formulation. Ah, oh, man. When he was Hercules. Let's get the money for My brother, my brother, me is sponsored by Squarespace. It's an all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to make your own website. You want to spread the word about my brother, my brother, and me, you go to, you go make your own website. My brother, my brother, and me. Fans, and we will sue you we'll so sue hard. You. Take but you down. The good thing about that is that they offer a support team uh, 24-7. Do they offer legal support because we sued you? I don't think so. Uh, they have new designs, it's got new features, and it's just eight bucks a month with a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Um, there's a, uh, also if you make a site, it'll make it like a mobile version of the site specifically for like mobile phones, so that's kind of nice. It's not without a lot of extra hassle on your part. Um, and you can start a trial with no credit card. Start building today. Don't wait to make your website. The dot-com bubble is just expanding now and it'll never burst. It's never bursted never. before either. It's a it's a Invest infinite Invest all bubble. your money. Yeah. I have so much money in pets.com, guys, and that is gonna, <laughs> how I'm sending my kids to college. <laughs> Good news is you're not going to have to invest all your money because we're going to save you 10% off your first purchase. Just use the uh, offer code my brother. That's all one word, my brother, to get 10% off on uh, the first thing you buy there. It's Squarespace, everything that you need to create an exceptional website. And hey, if you do, if you do use Squarespace and create a thing, tweet us a link. Yeah. Let, let us see your website. I want to see the website you made with that and make it about us. 
Yeah, because like, I don't I don't actually read anything that's not about me. So that would be very helpful. Um, guys, I just tore January off of my Dilbert calendar. Uh, uh-huh. The calendar is from nineteen. Your page a month calendar. It's 1997. So, like, the dates don't exactly match up, but, you know, sort of, you get a general idea. Uh, I legit forgot that Valentine's Day is coming up. Oh, yeah. shit. It'll sneak up on you. You gotta be careful. Um, Griffin, I'm in a panic now. Yeah. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Well, let me tell you what to do. Okay. You, tell me exactly you what to do. You can avoid the forgetting, letting Valentine's Day slip, slip your dome by going to proflowers.com. It's a flowers vendor website on internet that you can use to get the flowers and then you don't have to like go to the store and smell them and it sets off your allergies. You get them on internet and then you get it delivered to your house. Beautiful blooms and all sorts of different (laughs) colors. We have beautiful blooms here. Um, I'm talking about beautiful blooms. Let me tell you, let me just hit you with some of the stuff that they have on proflowers.com beautiful blooms check okay. covered that you can get 100 blooms of love with a free glass vase for just 19.99 i don't know if you guys know this that's crazy not expensive compared okay, wait, to other wait, flowers that's that's not enough for me i want to upgrade i want to add gourmet chocolates mm-hmm. and a teddy bear how much is that going to cost? Me? That's another nine dollars and ninety nine cents American U S dollars. Oh my god! That's such a good fucking. Deal. That's a crazy Wait. thing to get for that much money. That's insane, and you can get it exclusively through us on us by using the code my brother. Now here's how you do it though. You go to proflowers.com. You click on there's a blue microphone. Okay, it's in the top right corner, and you type in my brother. You can just use it as a coupon code. You gotta go to proflowers.com, you click on the blue microphone, and you type in my brother, and this is gonna be like a crazy, crazy deal, and you'll have it sorted. Like, that's Valentine's Day, sorted, done. We got sent uh, some flowers from from proflowers.com, so we could see them in our home. Which was a fun uh, thing. Because they're, of, they're according which us. Which was a fun thing to explain to my wife, my wife, I don't know about your how that situation <laughs> went down with your respect. Oh, you got me flowers. Yeah, yes, sure, yeah, sort of. Yeah, yes, yes it, of course yeah, I did, honey. Yeah. I love you. Could you send me a picture of them, though, so I could see what they look like? <laughs> Uh, yeah, they are they are gorgeous, and they are sitting in our home right now, and it's really nice. It's a nice vase. Mm-hmm. The flowers yeah. came super fresh, and it's in a, a a box. It's insane that this technology exists, but you take them out of the box, and they look amazing. It's, and it's you can beautiful. get that right now. Go to proflowers.com, click on the blue microphone, and uh, in the top right corner, type in my brother, all one word. It's a microphone like and, a podcast, because uh, that's, that's how you remember it. That's a mnemonic device. Yeah, uh, and th- do it soon. So, like, right now. Yeah, because uh, that won't last forever. Yeah. Oh no. Nothing Unlike much. love, this order won't last forever. Uh, you know who will live forever? Who? Uh, Yoshi. It's from Mario. No, from Brian. Uh, Brian says, "Happy moving in together today. Thanks for being the best girlfriend ever." Whoa! Really throwing down the gauntlet. If against all odds you actually do become a ghost before I do, please don't actually haunt my penis. Yeah, you didn't finish reading that sentence before you said it out loud, did you? I oh. hope that's a conversation that Brian and Yoshi have had before and oh, not boy, new howdy. information that Brian is dropping on Yoshi. We've got a new quiz quiz game we're playing in this section called In-Joke or Terrifying Revelation. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope that's an in-joke. Uh, also, I want the brothers to say that they love you one after another because you're so obviously awesome. You don't... I, I can't just throw my heart around. No, you know what? I'm going to say, Yoshi, I love you for putting up with Brian and all of his pee pee talk. And I can yeah, say, a lot of talk. I can say, I love Yoshi. And then it maybe I'm talking about this person. Maybe I'm just talking about the fact that Yoshi is my favorite character from Super Smash Brothers. Fair enough. It does that awesome egg you. roll, and it's really hard to hit him. So I love you. I love egg rolls. Yeah, me too. So happy, have a good one, guys. Enjoy that journey together. Uh, be patient and be understanding and give of yourself, and it'll all work out. Wow, fine. shit. Deep. Here's another message for Scott Foreman Murray, uh, who is 30 years old, uh, American, in the American keeping of time. Uh, this message is from Lindsay, who says, Happy birthday, Victor. Now, Okay, my memory right, is pretty right. short, but it's not so short that I forget that this dude's <laughs> ass name is Scott. 
What are you doing, Lindsay? What kind of scam are you running? Uh, happy birthday, Victor Scott. You are the best, funniest, smartest person I know, and my favorite human in the world. There's no one I'd rather spend the afternoon with, let alone the rest of my life. Thanks for marrying me this year, and here's to another seven or so decades full of nonsense, sandwiches, squeezels, and car rides, long car rides, listening to Mabim Bam, as us. Uh, I yes. love that this person has put a fairly fine point on when they're going to terminate. <laughs> yeah, 70, <laughs> 70 or so. Yeah. I mean, if we, can get, if we can get 70 out of this thing, it's fucking great. We'll beat the What's average. What's your name again? Victor? Scott. Victor? Scott? Scott? Oh, no. This doesn't... Guys, when it turns out that Travis just put in the wrong message there, be sure to email us so we can fix it next week. I simply did not. I am so proud to be an American and to be hosting Throwing Shade with you. I am proud to have really deep brown eyes. Well, this is a, actually supposed to be... You huh? know this is supposed to be a... Hmm? a a thing so that people listen oh, so to I've our show. I've just been so busy this week. Oh, okay. But I'm very happy to be here. The podcast is called... It's called Throwing, Throwing Shade. Shade. You're the co-host. Right. Yeah, So, uh-huh. uh, to Throwing Shade, we talk about... You're the about... gay co-host. I'm the female co-host. I always forget. We're friends in real life, kind yeah. of. And we talk about lady and gay issues. Yeah. And we talk about them in a way that, 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 they, that is really disrespectful. Yeah. If it's you like, love the world and hate yourself... Please listen to Throwing Shade. Yeah. I've had a Twitter account for a couple of years, but I've never really used it. A year ago, I was hired by a company with roots in the video game industry. I'm an artist. And a well-known company began following my little personal Twitter account, which led to several miscellaneous followers ranging from a couple YouTube stars to minor league music producers. Now, I feel obligated to tweet in an attempt to build a personal brand. But what? I don't want to sound ditzy or boring, but I don't know how to form a decent thought around a 140 character restriction. Help me, brothers. How do I tweet? That's from Tongue Tie Twitter. Now you're both verified Twitter account holders, correct? And listen, yeah. people, we fucking get it, right? Justin and I are verified, Travis isn't. Ha ha ha, it's a great joke that Travis isn't verified. But it's not because like Travis is worse than us. It's not that he's like the worst brother. It's not? No, tra- it's not. no, Travi. Everybody loves that's what you, people Travis. seem to imply. Well, they can back the hell off. It's just that they've they've implied such mean things. Hit. We're we're allowed to goof on each other, but if anybody goofs on either two of you, I'm taking them downtown to punch down. Um, <laughs> the problem is, which that- is this gym that I go to, and then I will make them watch me lift weights, and then they'll be intimidated. Lace up, and then we'll go around. And Travis around. is incapable of proving oh. that he is who he is. That's a problem. Justin yeah. and me, we can do it. Travis has a much much harder time. That's because Travis's tweet material is so erratic. You can't mm-hmm. fucking pin him down. He tweets And erotic. It's erratic, erotic. He tweets in a serpentine pattern. You can't get a beat on his ass. Me, I'm pretty much always just talk asking people for healthy recipes and complaining <laughs> about video games. That's pretty much my entire Twitter. Yeah. Um I mean here's the thing. If we give you advice on your own personal brand, then it's just gonna come from our personal brands, and I do not need any more competition in my space, which is pseudo ironic all lowercase tweets about the things that I did today. Uh here's here's one thing, one actual Twitter tip that I can give you is uh it's a really good time to tweet when you're watching something on TV that a lot of people are watching. Dude, I got you can, all my followers. That's when you can really harness the zeitgeist. It, if you want to build a brand, that's when you This do is it. what you do. This is what you do. Throw a party during, like, the Oscars. Throw an Oscars party. Get, like, 12 of your super funny friends in the same room. Get them all drunk. And then one of them, one of them says something funny, fucking tweet it. That's yours now. That's, that's yours your now. brand. They don't have to know. That's, like, a billion. Or you could do, like... You write in parentheses like H slash T, Joey Bag of Donuts, because then then you're giving a hat tip to your friend Joey Bag of Donuts. <laughs> That's what that means. But don't include his Twitter account name, or else people will just nope. like fucking flock there. You don't want to bleed your followers. It's all about SEO optimization. Now SEO does stand for search engine optimization. You have to optimize your optimization. Listen, there's fucking layers to this thing. It's Dante's Inferno. Don't Here's- be afraid to ask for a retweet. When I was watching the State of the Union. I said, uh, I hope the commander-in-chief has some Purell because uh, 
cold and flu season doesn't care what you're the president of. And then later in the tweet, this is where a lot of people stumble. I use the hashtag Purell, please retweet this. And then the next day, okay, so they sort of missed the zeitgeist. Kind of fell off it a bit. Purell did retweet me. So I have that. Mm. I have that in my sort of wheelhouse now. When I'm doing a bio, I say once retweeted by Purell. Mm -hmm. uh, And that's pretty exciting. Oh, the bio is so fucking important. Can we touch on that? You have to throw as many fucking buzzwords in there as you possibly can, including the word buzzword. Buzzword ninja. Social guru. (laughs) Master of... Tweet karate. I, I want you guys to know I and probably all of our listeners cannot tell if this is all bullshit. Forward thinker, think tank thinker, think, think, think. Good think. This all sounds pretty good to me. This sounds like learning how I optimization do so far. guru. Uh huh. Pro- Are you reading my bio? <laughs> Social coordinator and master of tweet foo. Foo. Yes. Do you guys ever see somebody's bio and think, God, it's a good bio. I wish I thought of that. I, I like honestly think I have the best Twitter bio um, on the entire internet. So I haven't touched it since day one, and I will never touch it. Can ever. you tell us what it is? I cannot. You got to go find out for yourself. All right, great. Whoa, this is I his like fucking this. personal brand. Travis is all about establishing a mystery. That's why that motherfucker is not verified. They send him emails all the right. time like, Travis, do you want us to verify you? And he says, if you can find if you can find me, try and just try and find me. You can uh like our friend Evan Minsker, right? his background, I think backgrounds are key too, because yeah. that's your chance to sort of have fun. His looks like an image from an old cookbook from the seventies. And when I saw it, I thought, God, that's so cool. I wish that was my background. Mm-hmm. And and now he's got that going for him. He doesn't even have to worry about it. And then his Twitter icon is hacks on Jim Duggan. Yeah. He's like his is, is a, it's a destination Twitter account. Go spend it's some a destination. Go spend Twitter some time account. on there. He's a he's a real smart fella. <gasps> That's a thing you got to have an your Twitter account has to feel like an event. When somebody walks in, they got to think like, whoa, I am just in time for this party because it is just mm-hmm. getting started. Mm-hmm. And let me throw this out: something for everyone. It's always great to throw like a hey, do you remember this? And then like post a YouTube clip from like Rocco's Modern Life. And then not only did you not just come up with any actual original content, but you get to bask in all the glow of it as people go, thank you, thank you for I think Travis just invented BuzzFeed. (laughs) Here's the thing, though. When you are putting up quotes from Rocco's Modern Life, make sure you source them to Morgan Freeman, Mm -hmm. because that's going to go viral. Uh, Mm -hmm. Do you guys want a Yahoo? Please. Uh, this Yahoo was sent in by Stephen Schaus. Thanks, Stephen. It's by Yahoo Answers user Lauren Dwan, who asks, what's the cheapest horse? And then additional info, I want a horse. <laughs> you want to go with the cheapest horse? What? Well, guys, what's the cheapest horse? The problem is, is you get what you pay for. You go with those cut rate, you know, thrift store yeah. horses. It's only going to last you like two or three years before the knees get a and Shet- elbows start to wear out. You get a Shetland, like, it's only going to put you back a couple grand, but, like, you're not going to feel the fucking wind in your hair that you would get from a premium horse. Mm-hmm. It's just, like, I don't, th- I think when you buy a horse, it's sort of like a, uh, it's sort of like buying a, a car, maybe. So you could buy a shitty car, sure. You're going to pay, like, a shit ton in terms of, like, upkeep and insurance. Like, I imagine horse fees are, like, astronomical. And that's why nobody well, fucking Griffin, has Well, Griffin, let it. me throw out the differences when you buy a shitty, cheap car. You don't have to feel any kind of emotions as it falls apart. <laughs> uh, as opposed to buying a shitty living being. Uh, and then going, I don't feel like feeding it. I've done a little research. Okay. Here's the thing. They're free horses. What the fuck? What the fuck? What? 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 I'm looking right now. I'm looking at equine.com. Okay. And I'm looking at free horses. This is a section that is just free horses to a good home. Okay. Can I just That's say it. then fuck all that other shit I just said? Because then you can just you, you can just get a burner. You know what I mean? <laughs> I want to write an untraceable horse. I want to ride a horse. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pay 300 bucks a month to just like fucking stable this bad boy. I'm going to get a burner, take him out for the weekend, 
And yeah, yeah, come on, come this way, come this way. Bye. That horse will outrun you. Good luck getting away from that horse, but you can just leave him in a field somewhere and then he'll, you know, horses lived for a long time before we like gave them oats and shelter mm-hmm. and shit. They're very resourceful. They're resourceful. They're gonna be fine. They're gonna be just fine. Get yourself a burner or a few burners. I, I'm looking at one listing that caught my eye. This is Smokey. She's a sweet senior pony looking for a retirement home. And you know what? I appreciate the coded language, but I know what you're saying here and it's that you don't want to deal with her death. Can you even- You want me to be a, the one who's carrying that emotional burden, no thank you. Can you have a senior pony? Isn't a pony a young horse? Well, no, just... no, we've been blasted for that before. Yeah. A pony is like a completely different thing. Did we like get- a Shetland pony is not a tiny horse. I mean, it is a tiny horse. I mean, horse. it is a tiny Speaking horse, but it will literally. not eventually become a horse. <laughs> Just add water. Do not feed after the Hold up. Have I... I'm, how, have I been getting this wrong for a, a quarter of a century? <laughs> have I really been getting this wrong? I thought it was like when you call a goat a kid cause when it's a baby. No, or a no, kangaroo. It's a foal. And a ca- foal is a, is, a, is a... And then a kangaroo yeah. has a joey, right? Uh huh. And then there's a murder. Joey Lawrence. A murder of crows. If it's a bunch of uh-huh. baby crows, a pony is not a baby horse. Are you fucking kidding me? No, it's that's this is the. Sorry, like that's this is the way it is. I need to stop belaboring this. I need to just play it off. Like ah, I got you guys, goofs, good jokes. <laughs> this is like my character I do on the show is a guy who doesn't know just like basic, simple, first grade shit. <laughs> Uh, so I'm sorry. I'm still trying to compartmentalize the knowledge that I could just have. Just a go horse. get a horse, sure. Just go pick up a horse that lives at my house. Yeah. What defines a good home in that respect? Because I would love the horse. Yeah, sure. And it would stand in my tiny backyard, and my dog would probably bark at it. Does that work? You would be the Fagin of horses, and that you wouldn't be able to take <laughs> especially good care of the horse. But you would create like a loving environment and atmosphere. Also, you would teach the horse to steal. <laughs> Probably a good way of doing this is to um, go to someone's home when they're not there and then damage all their uh, belongings and then put their horse into the house. And then when they show up, they're like, "How? what happened? I got to get rid of this horse. I got to get rid of this horse. And then you show up like 15 minutes later like, uh... I heard you're having some horse problems. <laughs> and then you're a real flim flamster. <laughs> I came from the city. I'm, I work for horse control. It's a huge... We got trouble run. right we here in River City with a capital H, and that stands for horse. Doesn't rhyme with we anything, a, though. We got a call from a horse who said he was going to... He said, uh, and this is a direct quote from your horse... He's going to jack up your shit. <laughs> and that also, he finished the fried chicken you had in your hey, refrigerator. Go check. Go check. I bet it's all gone. Uh-oh. He ate all of it. He sounded drunk. God, what if a horse got a taste for chicken? <laughs> he can't no chicken horse. will be safe. No chicken safe. The horses are so fast. And, and quite large. Much larger than several chickens. Stop trying to ruin horses for me. Let's do another question. Travis, there are so many in Cincinnati. You could just have one. Just have a horse. I'll take it. I'll take it. It's free. Are they all old ass fucking- Do not look in its fucking mouth. Are they- I have to assume if they're not old, they're crazy. <laughs> like they are ready to bite and down to kill. <laughs> Which is what I am looking for in an equine companion. Oh, Travis, that'd right. be a nice business though. You get a young horse uh, that's a kind of a dick. You break them, you bridle them, and you resell them for a profit. Doesn't sound like any work at all. Sounds like I'd make money hand over fist. You, now, when you worked at PetSmart, did you learn how to did, break and bridle a horse? Of course I did, Griffin. My, my education was three days long and all-encompassing. <laughs> for all animals under the sun, <laughs> under God's domain, what you got? The weirdest day was when we learned how to how to um, how to foster baby turtles. Yeah, when you birthed that was one full day. Then you birthed that Komodo dragon. That was a mm-hmm. life changing experience. And it imprinted on me. That's why you always see me with that Komodo dragon all the time, yeah. guys. I'm currently staying in a hotel now that serves complimentary breakfast in the mornings. Like a dummy, the only shoes I brought 
or big old hiking boots for the wintry weather outside. Is it acceptable for me to just wear my socks to the hotel? Ew, no, 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 no. And this is from pretty sure I should be wearing shoes in Pittsburgh. Oh, no, no. I mean, you know it. You said it in the name. No. <laughs> no, come on. No, no, I'm eating. I'm eating a waffle I made. This is the fucking highlight of my entire year. Can you fucking put some shoes on? Please. Do your socks have holes in it? Doesn't matter. Oh. Put on some fucking shoes. I'm eating. If someone walks in in socks, uh, my meal is over. My meal is done. If you're okay. Well, if someone walks in, Justin's meal is done because he cannot stand to share the room with anyone else. If you're okay. I, how much do you guys love when you're at a hotel and that a hotel also has a pool and then pool people come to other areas of the hotel in pool garb oh, as though it's so fucking they're upsetting. just trying to bring their fucking kick back to making lifestyle to <laughs> us of clothes just every time we've ever been a great wolf lodge it's like oh i'm gonna go down to the restaurant and got and also the elevator is full of people that are soaking wet it feels so judgmental it's like those commercials for jamaica right kick back have a cocktail relax why are you so it's like listen i'm at a hotel i'm trying to live my day-to-day -day life i can't join you in your fucking wet bacchanal right I can't do it. Some of us have jobs and shoes. Have jobs and shoes that are trying to eat free breakfast. <laughs> That's crazy. You shouldn't eat any meal with bare feet ever. I think that's a sin. Um, I'm okay with it as long as you're okay with me like sucking on cantaloupe or like staring at your toes. Is that cool? <laughs> Is that all right? Is that okay? Because that's what's that gonna happen. Fun. I'll hold the cantaloupe between my thumb and forefinger and I'm just gonna think about your child. I, I bet this question to ask her is pretty hungry at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Don't wait on us. I would just wear the boots. I mean, I would prefer the boots, right? I would just wear the boots and like a onesie long underwear set. Yeah. Or foot. Oh, and oh, do the boots and like the red, you know, flannel underwear, and then like an old timey miner's hat, mm -hmm. and then <laughs> and then just oh, and, and just bring go your own, bring it. your own thermos. Full of a little uh -huh. full of mine hooch. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving all of this. Talk about the vein you hit yesterday and how you think it's really going to pay out. Mm. Use your old prospector voice. Mm -hmm. This is the finest yeah. grits I've ever enjoyed. <laughs> Boy, howdy, sure does warm up the insides. <laughs> you have any more of that good oatmeal? Where's the scrapple? I <laughs> Scrapple. I think we dug up Cthulhu yesterday. <laughs> Let me get some oats. Hey, can you do me a favor? Can you tell that lady to put her fucking shoes on? Some of us are trying to live in a civilized society, goddammit. <laughs> uh, we... We hope you've enjoyed listening to our radio program, My Brother, My Brother, Me, and Advice Show for the Modern Era, half as much as we've enjoyed creating it for you. Uh, thank you to people tweeting about the show, like Kyle Smith, Tyler Matheson, Corn Porter, Stephanie Stone Rob, Slinky123, John Elliott, Cheetour, Chelsea Care, Christina, Funny Girl from Floor 9, Eru, Recovering Ninja Cat, so many others. Uh, you're all the best, and we sure appreciate all those tweets. If you want to tweet about the show, uh, maybe include a link to our sampler. It's bit.ly forward slash MBMBAM 2013. Um, I, I want to say thank you to everyone. There was such an abundance of really good questions. Yeah, I got week. a shit ton of great Yahoos, too. Thank you, yeah. guys. I don't think so I. Thank you, everybody. I don't think I read a Yahoo today that was sent in by somebody who has done it before. Like, that's awesome. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Welcome to the game. Yeah, and I don't think I've ever said it before, but if you, you know, we don't have time to answer everybody's questions. So if you've ever sent in a question before and you haven't heard us answer it, feel free to send it in again. I mean, it, it's quite possible that it's not that we didn't want to do it; we just ran out of so time. So long as sometimes it, we have them on the on the list of questions to hit, we just don't get to them. Yeah, so. and we yeah. read everything. So 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 do keep sending those in. Uh, real quick, I want to thank John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song, which is "It's a Departure" off the album "Putting the Days to Bed." When I was putting together the Yahoos this morning, I was listening to "Putting the Days to Bed," and like it's weird. Whenever "It's a Departure" comes on, I like get like freaked out. I think it's. I think this show gives me a panic attack, and so when I hear it, I'm like, "Oh God, do I need to be on right now?" 
Um, <laughs> so if you want to have that same panic attack, you can get putting the days to bed on you know Amazon or iTunes or whatever. Uh, um, our boss Jesse Thorne is doing a uh, conference for independent creators called Make Your Thing. He's trying to kickstart it now. Uh, it's going to be on October. If you go to Google and just search Make Your Thing, you'll see the Kickstarter there. Go kick in some bucks and maybe go to the event. And There's going to be some, some other cool, cool shit there. Yeah, some uh, cool, I forget cool all the big names that are going to be there talking, but uh, I know... Jane Espenson. Jane Espenson, Chris, Chris yeah. Chris Gethard. Uh, Merlin Mann. Merlin Mann's going to be there. Uh, fucking uh, Colt Cabana, the, the Art of Wrestling oh, yeah. podcast guy. He, he's fucking fantastic. I saw him do his, do his thing in Chicago once. Anyway... Uh, yeah, go check that out. And check out the other shows on MaximumFun.org. There's a lot of new ones. There's a lot of golden oldies. There's a, you know, Stop Podcasting Yourself, Jordan Jesse Go, Bullseye, Judge John Hodgman. Uh, new shows like The Goose Down, Oh No, Ross and Carrie. Sawbones. Yep. Sawbones. Oh, guys, do you know about Sawbones? Sawbones. Check out Sawbones. Check out Wham Bam Pow. Wham Bam Pow. It's, it's become one of my new favorites. I listen to it every week. Uh, and, yeah, go look at all those. If you have any questions for our guest, Bert, it's going to be on next week. Uh, send those in. Uh, What's the topic? The the topic that our guestbert is a guestbert in is gays and lesbians in the media. Uh, so if you want to focus your questions on that, or if you just have any questions uh, that you don't want us to answer because you know we don't know about it, that seems like a pretty safe yeah. bet too. Just make sure you put like guestbert in the subject yeah. so that uh, we do not miss them and that we know that you want it directed specifically at our guestbert. Uh, all right, you guys ready for that final? Hit me. It's final Yahoo was sent in by Andy Davenport. Thanks, Andy. It's by Yahoo Answers user Shane Stevens who asks, If you ride a horse to school, does the principal have to take care of it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad. Square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Hello, my name is Graham Clark. And my name is Dave Shumka. Together we host a show called Stop Podcasting Yourself. We're from Canada. Oh, whoa, whoa. Wait, don't, this, don't hang up. No, don't no, hang no. up. <laughs> and every week we're uh, lucky enough to be joined by a, a guest, sometimes a comedian, or sometimes just somebody that we like. And uh, somebody probably you've never heard of. Mm -hmm. and, but uh, trust us. <laughs> if you followed us this far into the promo, just try it out. Please. <laughs> Do we sound too desperate? <laughs> Stop podcasting yourself on MaximumFun.org.